Joining me now is Lee Bollinger, the president of Columbia University, uh, the former president of the University of Michigan, where he was a key figure in the 2003 Supreme Court decision we've been talking about, upholding the use of racial preferences to promote diversity, and the longest-serving Ivy League president, uh, who is going to transition out, but who has more experience on this subject than anyone. So, uh, President Bollinger, it's great to have you here. Talk to me Thank about you. how broad you are concerned, how broad is your concern that this will effectively um, do what it's done in California and Michigan, where bans were in place, really reduce diversity in the admitting classes? Yeah. So I think we're all still digesting the opinions of a very long 236 pages. Uh, but based upon, you know, a, um, a quick reading of this, I, I think one has to say this is effectively overruling uh, the Grutter decision, which was the landmark uh, decision that commanded a majority of the Supreme Court. Um, Chief Justice Roberts doesn't say that it's overruled, but um, but effectively the standard that's put forward, uh, I think, uh, accomplishes that. The effects on higher education, um, I think, you know, it's it's somewhat complicated, and glad to talk about um, uh, the nuances here. But I think we have to start out with the sense that this is a this is a very serious uh, change, and from my point of view, a tragedy in the efforts of this country and of higher education to try to deal with racial discrimination uh, that has, of course, been part of our history and continues in various forms, um, and the educational benefits of having students from different backgrounds uh, in attendance. We know, as you indicated from uh, the California experience and the Michigan experience, that uh, there is a very significant decline in uh, uh, diversity, racial and ethnic diversity. Uh, and I'm, you know, sorry to say that I think that will be the immediate consequence. And then the question will be where the court goes from here on a variety of admissions policies that, that might begin to correct that. In a statement, the Columbia University, your university, put out a statement that diversity is central to the identity of Columbia, which is the case in many schools, uh, certainly yes. many of the Ivies, uh, in terms of academic excellence, that diversity is a positive force across every dimension of Columbia and as we can and must find a durable and meaningful path to preserve it. Um, there are workarounds. One thing that students have raised is, I mean, activist groups have raised, is the legacy issue. If you got rid of legacies, you would eliminate, in some cases, 50 percent of the class, which represents generations of privilege that gets handed down. And it does certainly increase endowment to have longstanding families who have accumulated wealth in contrast to many of the minority families. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't accept that number. Um, universities vary in the degree to which they take account of the fact that they're parents of the applicant have gone to the college or, or the university. So the legacy issue is important and and I think really worthy of serious uh, discussion and debate, itself very complicated. But I think it would be a misjudgment here to think that uh, the way to grapple with what the court has now set the country, uh, of the course that set the country on by getting rid of legacy, it's not, that is not going to work. Uh, you're simply not going to get more racial and ethnic diversity uh, through elimination of legacy. It's just not going to uh, have that kind of effect. So, uh, so that's, a, uh, I think, a misdirected concern. It, what about standardized is, tests? Um, right. So, so here is where I think we um, we have to concentrate, and where I think there is a very important moment. So we know that standardized test scores were introduced many decades ago, with the idea that they would help achieve uh, equality of opportunity for. Uh, students all across the country. Um, it wouldn't connect, wouldn't depend upon connections, or the wealth of your family, et cetera. You could take the test, and if you did better than people 
who were well connected and wealthy, you could uh, get in. So that was the idea of standardized tests. Increasingly in the past uh, decade or so, it's become fairly clear to everybody that standardized test scores are a way of reinforcing inequality rather than uh, overcoming it. During COVID, many universities, Columbia included, made test standardized test scores optional in the admissions process. So we have real experience with admitting classes that uh, are not based upon uh, standardized test scores. And I think the, the outcome of that is a realization that our classes are just as great as they were before. And we may have uh, arrived at a judgment that standardized test scores should be given much less significance in the admissions process. I think that together with the um, decline of the power of rankings, uh, it really gives universities the opportunity to rethink admissions, not to be wedded to uh, things like average uh, standardized test scores, uh, and then to think about ways in which to bring in different people, different groups of people within the society. At Columbia, there is a program a school of general studies, it's called, that was introduced after World War II. It has become remarkably successful. It's unique in the country. Uh, so we admit um, many students every year for our undergraduate program, and they're fully integrated into the uh, student body. And we admit many veterans, for example, more than all the Ivy League combined. And those veterans do extremely well, and they're just great to have part of the student body. So we may expand our notions of uh, admissions across the country, now I'm talking about higher education generally, and begin to consider the benefits of taking people from different groups. And in doing that, uh, we may end up with um, multiple kinds of diversity, but uh, greater diversity, but including racial and ethnic diversity.